Uh, tonight, the, uh, the, the title of the, ser of the message is To Vow or Not to Vow. That is the question. And, uh, and the law of vows is, uh, is for just for the, uh, the Jewish people. The, these, these are not things for the church. This is not all given to the church for, for uh, examples of things that we should do. Now, we can use those for, for examples and, and, and different things, uh, but not, uh, not to say that this is the interpretation of this verse, you know. So, uh, so we'll begin in verse number 1 and chapter number 30. And uh, this is only 16 ver verses, so we'll, we'll probably go through these pretty fast, right? I, I have some extra uh, things to read anyway, so it, it'll take a little longer. But, uh, and, and Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. All right. That, that they should have, they should have, their ears should have perked up when he said, This is the thing that the Lord commanded. And, uh, and so he begins to teach them the law of vows. You know, when you, when you, uh, when we, when the two, two young people, uh, young man, young woman, they get, uh, get uh, d d engaged to, to be married and all, and, uh, you know, they go up before the preacher and, uh, and they're, they're there, and what are they doing? They're making their vows. They're, they're, they're saying their vows, and what is that vow? It, it is a solemn promise. It's a solemn promise made before a holy God. Now, we, we can look at that and we can, we, can, uh, we can identify with those kind of things because there's been a lot of folks here that have stood up before a, 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 a pastor and, and he has is, he is, uh, said now, do you promise that, you know, to, to do this and this? And, you know, and, and once we, we get there, we we uh, we see that uh, you know that the these people these the people of today don't look at it like it's a promise. They look at it like it's a suggestion. You know, it's it's not something that they're solemnly vowing before God. Uh, but uh, you know, and and uh, you know from the from the time that uh, Adam and Eve were in the garden. And uh, before they, they fell, uh, God married them. And, uh, you, know, if, you know, a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves unto his wife. And that's exactly what Adam did. He left his father and he cleaved unto his wife. And, uh, you know, and, and that, that, was the, uh, that was the point. And, and the, the vow that they made... Uh, was they swore an oath to bind them. And it's, you know, people look at uh, uh, marriage like it's a, an op a revolving door that, you know, you can go in and, and if, you don't, if you get t tired of it, you just go out. But that's, that's not exactly the way God looks at it. All right, but, but Moses uh, is talking to the heads of the tribes because it's going to be their responsibility to, uh, to make sure that their tribe is, is following the, the, the law and doing, doing what the law says. And uh, verse number two says, uh, If a man vow a vow unto the Lord and swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. That uh, that could uh, bring some 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 uh, some real uh, problems in people's lives because uh, if you make a vow rashly, you, you're going you may you may find out that the the, uh, the what you have to do to pay for that vow is going to be a uh, a, 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 a painful thing to you. In Judges chapter number eleven. In Judges chapter number 11, uh, there's a man named Jephthah. And uh, Jephthah uh, vowed a vow unto the Lord in uh, chapter 11 and verse number 30 of Judges. 
and, uh, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hand, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Now, if it was the dog that came, the one of his pet dogs or something that came out, then it would have been the dog that he offered. But it's, but this, this, uh, in this particular instance, he comes home from defeating the Ammonites, and uh, and and uh, and he looks, uh, he looks up, and coming through the door is his daughter, the only child that he had, the daughter. Now, what, did, what was his vow? Uh, his vow was that uh, it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it for a burnt offering. Oh, my goodness. He never thought that his daughter would be the one that came out. She came out in a in a joyful way because she had seen her father coming home and she came out uh, with uh, timbrels and uh, and dancing around and she was uh, happy to see her father uh, and then uh, it, if we look down a little further in the in the story there in chapter eleven of of Judges in verse number thirty four. And, and Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. Now, he didn't mean that, that he didn't like her. He meant that when he saw her, his heart fell because he knew that he had made the vow. You know, you, 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 and we might say, well, you know, God wouldn't make him uh, uh, stick with that vow. God wouldn't make him do that. But uh, do you remember Abraham? God told Abraham, now, uh, I want you to take Isaac, your only son Isaac, and I want you to, I want you to take him uh, to, this, to this hill or mount uh, three days' journey from here, and I want you to offer him as a burnt offering on the, on the top of that mountain. Then I'm going to show you where it is. And, and uh, every one of us probably would have said, Lord, uh, can't we, can't we go some other route on this? Do, do we, do we uh, you know, can't we do something else? And yet uh, Abraham didn't do that. He, Abraham, you know what he said? He said uh, to his servants, he said, get, get ready in the morning, we're leaving. Uh, and, uh, you know, prepare the, the wood. Make sure you've got the, the fire for the, uh, for the, for the, the offering. And uh, we're going to go and we're going to make an offering to the Lord. And sure enough, he, he did. He made an offering for the Lord to the Lord. But, uh, you know, it wasn't Isaac that he offered. It was a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. You know, and, and you see the mercy of God in that. Because that was, he was the promised son. But, but here we have Jephthah. And uh, the book of Judges is a time of, uh, time when Israel was, uh, was in the will of God one, uh, for, for 30 or 40 years and then out of the will of God for 30 or 40 years. They, they were captive to uh, the Philistines and the Midianites and all the other peoples around them. They were captives to them many times during that. And, uh, and the book of Judges is a, is a time that uh, and it, it ended when it said that every man did what was right in his own eyes. But that's, that's not what Jephthah did. Jephthah said, I, I've made a vow to the Lord. He said, and I'll keep it. Now, 
that, that would be something to be hard for us all to do. So he rent his clothes and he said, alas, my daughter. Mm. He said, thou hast brought me very, I'm, I'm just, I'm sick because I've, I've, I don't know what I've got to do. And, uh, you know, and he says, uh, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord and I cannot go back. How many has ever ever promised something that you couldn't get you couldn't do? You know, you, you promised you would try to do it if you could or whatever. You promised, and uh, you know, it, it's sometimes the circumstances keep you from doing things. But Jephthah said, "I can't go back on my word to God." I wish, I wish the, the people of today had that kind of commitment. We don't have that kind of commitment today. Most of the time, people are, are, are just running the way they want to. Verse 36, and she, she said unto him, now this is a good daughter right here. She said unto him, my father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth, for as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance of thee on thine enemies, even the children of Ammon. Oh my goodness! Now you, you, that 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 didn't make it any easier for Jephthah, but you know what he did? He took his daughter and he offered her for a burnt offering. That 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 was, uh, you know. That was, that was one of those vows that we're talking about. If a man makes a vow unto God, he'd better keep it or not make the vow at all. You, you better count your chickens. You know, don't be counting your chickens before they hatch. The vow uh, that he made, uh, you know, he never thought, he never thought that it would be his daughter. I mean, it might have been one of the, the, the hired servants that came out. It might, it might have been some, some other one that came out. But, you know, it was his daughter. And he did what God said to do. All right, and so that, it, that's one of the, uh, one of the I illustrations in the scriptures of a man who makes a vow unto the Lord. And that vow means something to him. And uh, so the vows that we make unto the Lord, he, it is uh, the man who made this, the vow was unconditionally bound by the words of his mouth. Unconditionally bound. In other words, there, there was nothing that could uh, change what was, what was going to happen. In that situation. Now, in uh, Genesis 28, uh, verses 20 to 22, Jacob vowed a vow unto the Lord, saying, uh, "If Lord, if God, if, if Thou wilt be with me, and I keep and keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God." Now, that's, that's the kind of vow that, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't have a consequence with it. I mean, the only consequence he has is he, the Lord's going to be his God. And this, he said, this stone which I've set for a pillar shall be God's house. And uh, they, he named that stone Bethel, the house of God. And, uh, and he said, and, and, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. He's going he's to tithe everything that he owned. And he owned a lot. He owned a, a, a tremendous amount. And, uh, but a tenth of them belonged unto, unto the Lord. All of the, the cattle, all of the, the lands that he, that he had, uh, they didn't really have any property, but all of the things that they had, a tenth of them he gave to the Lord. 
And so there was, an, there was another illustration, see, of a vow that was made, and, uh, and the vow had to be kept because of the words of his mouth. And if he didn't give the tenth, you know, if he did everything else, if he let God be his God, but he didn't give the tenth, the tithe, then, then uh, God would have judged him based on the words of his own mouth. And uh, so the, the vow has to do what, with what a man swears in an oath to God. And, uh, and, and there was also, uh, if a, he says, if a, if a man vow a vow unto the Lord, there back in chapter 30 and verse 2, if a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. And uh, so a man that does it, he, he, has to, uh, he has to pay the vow. Psalm 76, 11 says, Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. And in Job twenty two twenty seven, 27, uh, it says, Thou shalt make the prayer, thy prayer unto him, unto God, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. You know, Job had a lot to be thankful for. I mean, he had, uh, he had ten children. He had lands, all these lands and everything. Uh, he, he, had, he had everything that a man could want. And, uh, and yet, in, in one day, all of it was taken from him, including his health. And then, and, and then he had, uh, he had, he was sitting there in the, the midst of a, of a garbage dump uh, that was burning with fires. And, and uh, he took an old piece of a broken pot and uh, scraped the scabs that were all over him just to, to get a little bit of comfort from, from what he was going through. And... Uh, and then, of course, we read all, all about his, his friends coming. And uh, with friends like that, you know, who needs enemies, right? And so he, he had a, uh, he was given a, uh, uh, an opportunity, though, to, uh, to continue to be faithful to a holy God. I mean, even his wife came up to him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? And he, speak, he says, you speak like one of the foolish women. Though, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. I, I mean, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because he had made a vow to the Lord. He had made a vow to him. All right, and so the vows that, that a man made unto the Lord should be kept or there'll be consequences for, for not keeping them. The, the, next, the next verse, verse number three, talks about vows that are made between a father and his daughter who is yet in, his, in her father's house. And if a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow and her bond, wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. And it, they'll, they'll be in force, and the consequences would be on to her if she didn't keep her vows. Uh, but if her father disallow her in that day, that he heareth not any of her vows, or uh, uh, not any of her vows, or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. So if her father says, uh-uh, no, no, don't, you're not going to do that, uh, then, then uh, her, her vows would not stand because her father disallowed them. And uh, th so if this is a young woman. Now, uh, you remember when uh, 
the, the greatest story, I guess, of this would be uh, Mary, the, the, the mother of Jesus. She was, uh, she was found with child. And uh, surely she had vowed a vow of, vir of virginity, in other words, to, uh, to abstain from, uh, from any man until she married. And, uh, you know, that, uh, when, when, we, uh, when we have the, the Christmas story, you, you can't tell, I mean, we can't tell the, 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 off, the awful part of it. Probably the way that they, they were treated by their families. Because, fa you know, families think the worst when, it, when it's something has, has happened like that. And she's, she's you know... She's a, she's a, 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 a virgin girl, and, uh, and, and, you know, she has, you know, the only thing she knows about all of this is th that when Gabriel came and, and talked to her and said, uh, now, this is the way it's going to be. Uh, you're you're going you're gonna to be with child of the Holy Ghost, and you're going to bring forth a son, and you'll name him Jesus, and he's going to be... Uh, the uh, he's going to rule, uh, and he's going to reign in uh, in this world. Uh, Isaiah chapter seven and verse fourteen. Uh, that's a familiar scripture that says, "Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign: Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son; shall call his name Emmanuel." And so th there, in in that one moment. She realizes that she's the fulfillment of, of Holy Scripture. She's the one that God has chosen to bear the Son of God into the world. No one else was, was uh, given that job. Uh, no, every, every young woman wanted to, to be that one, but not know what kind of consequences are going to be. With, that goes along with the, uh, the blessings of, of all that. Matthew chapter 1 uh, in verse 18 is, Now the, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. In other words, they had had the first, the first part of the, we the wedding ceremony, and Joseph had gone away to build onto the house, to his dad's house. And, uh, and then he would come at a time that was uh, a time appointed to, to come back to get his bride and uh, take her home with him. That's what Jesus is going to do for us. He's going to come and get us one day. Some people say, well, the rapture of the church isn't in the Bible. I believe it is. I believe in, and I believe it's, it's when he comes to get his bride. And that's what the church is. The church is the bride of Christ. And, uh, and she was told that uh, she would bring forth a son to call his name Jesus because he was going to save his people from their sins. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26 to 38, he tells the, the rest of the story. He said, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And, you know, we would say the same thing. She said, what did you say? <laughs> and, and so he, 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 uh, he told her, and the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall uh, reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his, of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come unto thee, 
The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy th thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath conceived in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, she made a vow. And she's going to pay that vow when, she, when the baby comes. And the angel departed from her. <coughs> Vows made but, uh, between uh, a father and a, and a daughter. You know, can you imagine the, his, her father? I believe his name was Heli. And her father was uh, a, uh, you know, he was, a, he was of the house of David. He was, he was just like Joseph's father. He was, they were both of the house of David. And so they were, they were from the tribe of Judah, and they both came together uh, as, you know, and, and it was going to be a perfect marriage. And they, they had already been espoused together, and, uh, and, it, it had all, all, and, and when they find that she is expecting, Joseph was, uh, was minded, and I think it was probably told, to, to put her away privately. And let's don't, let's don't make it a big family issue. Let's, let's get this out of the way. Let, and don't, don't allow this to, to interrupt our, our lives. But you know, uh, Joseph was a just man. And not willing to make an example of her. He could have had her, her she could have, he could have had her head shaved and, and made her walk down through the streets and, uh, and made her to, uh, to be uh, scoffed and scorned by all the people. But he was a just man. And when the angel came to him and, uh, and told him what was, what was going on, uh, you know, he, he took her to be his wife. And what he, what he did was he went and he took her and he took her to his house. Now, I don't, I don't know if her father had disowned her or what, but uh, that's, that's what they do. You know, they say that uh, the Jewish people that, that accept Jesus as their Messiah, uh, their families have, a, have funerals for them. I mean, they have headstones in the, in the graveyard, you know, got their name on it, the date they, they, uh, didn't, they became a Christian instead of a Jew. And, and they, they just have this. Not all of them do it today, and I'm thankful for that, but, you know, it, it's, a, it's a time of, uh, you know, that they have a, uh, uh, it's, it's, a it's, it's a hard thing uh, to, uh, you know, to teach some of these things because they're, they're, uh, they're vows that are, uh, that are sacred vows between two people, either between God and man or between a husband and wife or a father and a daughter. And, uh, and that's all of, the, all of the chapter is uh, completely about that, that issue uh, of these vows that are made. Vows made by a married woman could be invalidated by her husband. Now, she, if he made a, she made a vow, you know, and she said, uh, uh, if he ever does that again, I'm going to <laughs> do something to him. Uh, you know, then, then th there's, there's going to be, you know, that kind of a vow is, uh, you know, is going to be uh, hard for her. And her husband, you know, would probably say, I don't think so. You, you, we're going to. We'll see about that. Her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it and held his peace. Then her vow shall stand and her bonds shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that she made the vow, then she made her vow of none effect and the Lord, and the Lord shall forgive her. So, so the, the, the vows that, they made, that were made by a husband and a wife are different from the vows that are made between a, a, a father and a daughter. And, uh, but then, what about widowed women? 
You know, some people, uh, you know, think, well, they're, they're widows now, and they, they, they have nothing, you know. But the, the vows that they make, uh, if they make a vow uh, wherewith they bond, bound their soul, uh, those vows will stand against them or stand in, in, in spite of everything. And if she made the vow in her husband's house or bound her soul with an oath, and her husband heard it, and he held his peace and disallowed her not, then all of her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. She has to fulfill all of those, of those things. If her husband hath utterly made them void on the day that he heard them, then whatsoever proceedeth out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. So there, in that case, a vow that was made can be forgiven. And then every vow, he, sa it, it, he teaches us, and every binding oath to afflict the soul, the husband may establish it or may make it void. And so the husband has, has uh, certain rights in the, in the family. But if her husband altogether holds his peace at her from day to day, and then he establisheth all her vows uh, or her bonds which are upon her, he confirmeth them because he held his peace at her at the day that he, that he heard them. But if he shall in any way make them void after that he heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. You know... What are these things? What, you know, what does this mean? What, is, what does this mean? This is, this, is, uh, you know, this is some of those hard things to teach, and it's probably harder, harder to, uh, for, for us to, to hear and understand what, you know, basically what all he's talking about. But uh, uh, it's, it's all about promising God something and not fulfilling it. And if we, if we promise something we ought to keep what we promise you know you know sometimes you, you you make promises to your kids that you can't keep and you know and, and uh, you know hey if, you know if you're really good we'll go and get some ice cream and uh you know and it's raining cats and dogs la that night and the storms got the lightning's flashing and everything and you can't go and what are you supposed to do the kids say no oh, but dad, you promised, you promised, you know. But, you know, some things we can't control. And, uh, uh, but the, uh, the, the vows that are made have, have, must be kept because these are statutes which the Lord commanded Moses concerning these things. Now, if, if, I, if you ask me if I understood everything uh, in this chapter, I said, I'll tell you exactly what, uh, what, I, what I mean. No, I do not. Because, you see, this, these are things that are for the people of Israel. When they go into the land, it wasn't even for them when they were on the other side. This is for them when they go into the land, and they're living there, and then people are going to have to make judgments uh, uh, you know, it, uh, are you are you right in this or are you wrong in this? You know, uh, Moses Moses had to do that for the whole nation of Israel for a while. He they would come to him with all their problems and all their things, and and he had to try to sort it all out. And uh, you know, it was it was a difficult thing. It, it was sort of like when Solomon brought the. Uh, that they brought the two women in with the one baby. And uh, the one woman had rolled over on her baby in the night and killed the baby, but she had taken the other baby and said, this is my baby, and now, now they go to Solomon, and Solomon has to figure out whose child this is. And so what he, he did was he, he said, uh, now... This is, this is what we'll do. Uh, I'll get one of my soldiers to cut the baby in half. You can have half of the baby, and she, you can have the other half. And the, and the mother cried out, no, no, you know, hey, let her have the baby. 
And uh, Solomon said, give her to that woman. Give the baby to that woman. Because the other woman didn't, didn't make a sound. She, it, that was not her baby. And so it wasn't going to affect her at all. And, uh, and so uh, the, the, these things are, are, are difficult to see sometimes. But uh, as, as, we, as we study through them, uh, it's good sometimes just to get through the chapter that you've been studying. Amen? <laughs> you know, I, I understand, too, why you know, a, lot of, a lot of preachers, when they get to a difficult place and they're writing a commentary, they don't say a whole lot about it. They just go on. And, and you, have you ever noticed that if you've been reading your, your uh, commentary? And, and so, you know, you're really wanting to know, I wonder what he really meant by that. And you go in there and you try to find out. And, and sure enough, he's, he, just, he just said, uh, and, and we'll move right on over to the next chapter now. <laughs> and, and yet, you know, you're still wanting to know, you know. There was one preacher that uh, really wanted to know what, what it meant uh, by the, the young man that was at Jesus uh, when Jesus was taken captive and, and uh, they caught him by his clothes and he ran away naked. And, uh, and, and uh, I've heard people say, well, now, uh, you know, let, let, I'd, I'd like somebody to tell me who that was. And uh, we don't know who that was. But he, he didn't have his cloak, at least. And uh, I, I don't know if the word naked really meant, you know, without any clothes, but Whatever it meant, he was taken off, and he was, uh, you know, and I believe I would have done the same thing, you know. But uh, as, as, as we think about these things, and as we look at these things, uh, uh, in, the, in the first five books of the Bible, there's, this, this is the law for Israel to keep. And that's why they called it the law. And uh, the books of the law, then... And uh, when we get over into De Deuteronomy, we'll see more of the same. We'll see more of the same that comes along. But we'll also see uh, the things that, uh, that, that occurred during the last days of Moses' life. And we're told, we're told here in Numbers that uh, God said, uh, Moses, you're, you're going to die. It's almost time for you to go up on the mountains to see the, the, the land. But you're not going to go in because you, you sinned back there in Kadesh Barnea. When you were supposed to speak to the rock, you smoked the rock again. You smote it twice. And, and he, had to, and he couldn't, couldn't live uh, any longer. Aaron had already died. Miriam had died. And Moses was the only one left other than jo Joshua and Caleb that were over 20 years old when they, uh, when they went back out into the 40 years of wandering around, 38 years uh, out there in the desert. And uh, so we'll see a lot of good things in that, and we'll see a lot of wonderful things that, uh, that, that lead us into the things of Christ in the New Testament. And that's the, the most important thing about uh, the scriptures. We, we can see Christ in many of these things. You know, hey, we just saw Christ in the vows that were made. I mean, in, in everything, you can see the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's the important part. He is what this book is all about. And thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, open your book. Lord, we don't un understand everything, but we do. we do try to... Uh, to show to show forth Christ in all of these things, Lord, may may you be glorified in everything that we do and that we say, and may it be to the glory of God in Jesus' name, Amen.